I'm sorry about this. I mean, thank you, Avis, for this uh, kind invitation. And uh, I'm going to be talking about the basic concepts of Contura. May not be relevant to those who are regularly doing this, nor is it for neophyte refractive surgeons. It's basically those uh, who are into refractive surgery, some of the concepts on how Contura vision helps us. Uh, relevant to this presentation is the fact that I'm a consultant to Alcon and JNJ, and Contura vision is something that has been brought about by Alcon. So we have various types of laser vision correction options that are available to us. The plano scan, wavefront optimized, wavefront guided, topo guided, custom queue, et cetera. And way back in the early 2000, we were all extremely excited about wavefront guided and the optic was the buzzword where we tried to customize our correction based on the agrometry. And what we are trying to do is to consider and correct the aberrations, the whole eye on the corneal plane. And essentially reduce the amount of aberration that pre exists in the eye and not really concentrating on minimizing the amount of correction aberration that we induce during the treatment. Neither was it considering the Q value or the peripheral corneal aberrations. We used to talk about supervision and talked about 6362 vision, but then we realized that it was more the quality of vision which is more important than quantity of vision. That's when the concept of wavefront optimized treatment came up where the concept was more towards minimizing the amount of spherical abrasion induced by the correction that we are doing and essentially to leave behind the cornea with the kind of aspericity that we started out with. And here there was no effort to correct the abrasion that was always pre-existent, but it was more towards correcting, uh, uh, not inducing abrasions because of the treatment that we are doing. So then came the topo guided treatment, which is available to us right from 2003, essentially in Europe and later came into India and the rest of Asia, where it, it was essentially a uh, repair tool where defective corneas were taken up and then subsequently subjected to this treatment so as to correct it the best corrected visual acuity. It was not really the uncorrected visual acuity, which was most important, but regularizing the cornea so that with subsequent contact lenses or glasses, or even a subsequent laser vision correction, you could improve the quality of vision. So this is just an example of uh, um, um, topo guided treatment. You can see this is what was initial, this was what was later, and this is essentially the uh, difference and uh, you can see from a very irregular cornea, what you have got is a horizontal bow tie pattern, which could be corrected more adequately with by glasses, or even if some adequate amount of cornea tissue is available, you could do a laser vision correction as secondarily to get a more regular cornea, at the same time correct the refractive error quite adequately. So what exactly the uh, topo guided treatment had advantages over the wavefront guided the concept was that, that wavefront guided essentially removes a lot of tissue to make the cornea more spherical based on the flattest part to produce a planar wavefront. That is in case you had a cornea like this, it essentially reduced the spherity of the steeper part of the cornea so as to mask the more flatter part. On the other side, uh, the, as far as the topo guided treatment is concerned, it not only flattened out the steeper part, but also did some treatment on the periphery of this uh, flatter part so as to steepen it so that because of this bimodal treatment, the amount of corneal tissue used by this for the similar amount of correction compared to a wavefront guided treatment was almost the one third less. And that was significant advantage, when I, especially when you came to irregular corneas or subsequent to initial treatment. The other advantages of a topo guided treatment over a wavefront guided treatment is the fact that as far as the wavefront of a particular eye is concerned, it could vary from time to time, depending on the time at which we take the uh, measurement, depending on the pupillary size, the age of the patient, etc. On the other hand, topo guided is from the surface of the cornea, so it remains static, is reproducible, provided you same, use the same kind of equipment, the same kind of techniques, and provides better peripheral data. You use usually 22 rings in a pentacam acquiring about 22,000 points compared to about 1,000 points, which is what is used with a wavefront guided treatment. And more measurement points are thus available. And 90% of the aberrations are on the corneal surface, and we are getting all the measurement from this. And this is not, as I already mentioned, affected by age, people's size, or their lens opacity. So more important advantages of topo guided treatment is also that it is guided by the aspericity of that particular cornea and the corneal curvature, and it's not 
pupil centric, but it's centered on the corneal vertex, essentially on the visual axis of the patient. Inbuilt is this concept of cyclotorsion compensation. And since it's not pupil centric, pupil centroid shift does not seem to matter. So where exactly did the concept of contura came in? Uh, when um, topogated treatment for the treatment of irregular corneas became quite accepted, uh, uh, they were, Alcon wanted to introduce this into US. And when FDA was approached for TCAT treatment approval for highly aberrated corneas, they came up with a very relevant uh, question that uh, before using it on highly aberrated corneas, show us that uh, it works well on uh, normal corneas. And hence became the necessity to go ahead and treat normal corneas using this modality. So what exactly is contour vision entails? It's basically a topo guided treatment of the primary corneas where you think refractive error is essentially the problem. The amount of hydro aberrations are quite minimal, but now we believe that correcting even these hydro aberrations has a beneficial impact. So we use a placido based topographic equipment like the topolyzer or the allegro uh, topolyzer vario. The simpler based instruments do not work quite adequately for this. So what exactly happens is we acquire using the topolyzer vario, the data about the hydro aberrations and combine it with the clinical refraction and using the software of the uh, EX500, go ahead and use the laser to exactly not only correct the refractive error, but also the hydro aberrations that are present on the corneal surface so that you get a better quality of vision apart from correction of the refractive error. So this is the basic uh, concept. This is a topo map that is acquired by the topo, uh, uh, by the topolyzer. And this is the ideal topography that you want to achieve. Then this is subtracted from this, and this is becomes the ablation profile for the hydro ablation, which is combined with the basic treatment profile that's needed for the correction of the refractive error. And the final uh, profile that is applied onto the cornea for the correction of the refractive error and the hydro ablations on the so-called normal non-abrated cornea becomes this. Just going on to a couple of other examples, this is the manifest refraction which needs to be corrected. This is the height data of the high rod aberration that needs to be corrected. And you combine both these, and this is the final treatment plan that is applied on the cornea. One of the things that we make sure whenever we are using a contour is that the wavefront optimized profile and the final contour profile are somewhat similar, as you can see in this case. If there's a wide variation, that's a relative contraindication as far as the use of this profile is concerned. You can see the uh, uh, fellow eye of this patient. This is the manifest refraction. This is the height data for the high rod aberrations. And this is the final treatment profile. So as you can see here, when we try to address the high rod aberrations, then we not only try to correct uh, this, uh, flatten out the steeper areas, but go beyond the steeper areas and do this bimodal treatment so as to cause a little bit of flattening here. Because of this bimodal treatment, the amount of tissue that's used is minimal. Of course, using the positives, et cetera, now we have the concept of talus and we dwell more deeper into this. And maybe it's a more aberrated corneas which uh, uh, benefit from this type of treatment, but that's beyond the scope of this basic presentation that I'm doing today. So what exactly are the uh, features of the contour? It corrects most adequately the sphere and cylinder, which is most important. But whenever you talk about correcting higher order aberrations, quality of vision, et cetera, unless you are able to get refractive accuracy, all these concepts go out of the window. Then you try to correct the corneal irregularities doing a topo guided treatment. And another important factor is this treatment is also wavefront optimized because of which the induction of spherical aberration itself is uh, reduced. It's cyclotorsion compensated. It's centered on the corneal apex that is on the visual axis. So it seems to have best of all worlds as far as treatment of a primary cornea is concerned for a refractive error. So it corrects sphere and cylinder, corrects corneal irregularities, minimizes the induction of spherical aberrations, and thus enhances the quality of vision that we get. And on top of it, as I already mentioned, we correct the, it's based upon the Q and the Q values of this particular cornea. So for the FDA study on contour, there were 212 subjects, 249 eyes were enrolled in nine sites in USA. And topo guided treatment was done on primary corneas. Myopia up to minus nine diopters with astigmatism up to minus three diopters. 
resulting in a spherical equivalent of minus not beyond minus eight diopters. All patients beyond 18 years of age were used. So what was found was that nearly 30% of these eyes gained one or more lines of post-op uncorrected visual acuity at three months compared to pre-operative visual acuity. This was something amazing because no other form of treatment till then has shown an improvement of more than one line of visual acuity in one third of the patients. And this again remained quite stable, you know, lasting for almost 31% of the eyes for a period of 12 months. And 90% of the eyes showed a post-op best corrected visual acuity that was equivalent or better than pre-operative best corrected visual acuity. And 40% gained one or more lines in post-operative best spectacle corrected visual acuity. So obviously, this seemed to be a better way even on primary corneas without aberrations as far as the resultant visual acuity and the quality of vision is concerned. And that's the reason FDA went ahead and approved this in the year 2013. We ourselves did a contralateral eye study and published in the year 2017, where one eye underwent uh, wavefront optimized treatment. One eye was subjected to contour eye treatment. 100 patients, 200 eyes were the subject matter of this particular study. And 100% of the eyes undergoing contour eye treatment had a post-operative mean residual spherical equivalent error of less than minus 0.5 diopters. While in a case of wavefront optimized, where the results were also equally encouraging, still it was just 95%, where it was less than 0.5 diopters of mean residual spherical equivalent. And as uh, was in the FDA study, our results also mirrored the exact fact that 30% of the eyes undergoing contour had more than one line of improvement in visual acuity. And even more importantly, as far as the quality of vision is concerned, there was a slightly lower induction of horizontal coma trifoil with contour compared to the fellow eyes which underwent a wavefront optimized treatment. But this was not statistically significant. Suffice it to say that uh, we have several modalities of treatments available to us. We have the PRK, the wavefront optimized, the femtosecond laser, the smile treatment, and I believe the contour vision is also a very important addition to the armamentarium that we have to provide optimal results to our present-day refractive surgery patients. Thank you so much for your attention.